They feel so valuable. And we, we just love that this year. It was the first year we've really, really been able to do that. Um, think big and regularly express belief in the kids. Uh, we wanted them to believe that they were going to get better every year and that they could set some goals and really go for these things and that we believed in them. And I'm, again, I'm not talking about our, just our good kids. I'm talking about you know, the ones that probably aren't going to ever be varsity, but they can still do great things. There was a, a story I, I read this morning, I think it was, on Mile Split about some kid that started his running career at 30, running a 36-minute 5K and finished his senior year running, I think it was in the 18 minutes, and actually got to run at the state meet for his team. I mean, that is a great story. And I want all my kids to think maybe they could do something like that. Um, one thing we did that I think really helped build camaraderie on our team as well as raise some money that we needed to do things because we have zero budget that's given to us by the school um, was a 24-hour relay. So we do this, this relay thing where the kids camp out at, on our turf field and we put them on two teams, two or three teams. I think we did three teams this year because we have so many kids and they just run continuously mi one mile at a time and hand off to the next person on their team and um, they camp and we have fun the parents we do a cookout and the parents bring breakfast the next day and the kids really really look forward to this and we raised like twelve thousand dollars or something to doing it people make pledges per mile or how or just a flat pledge so that's a tradition that we started Okay, so this is not a talk about training. Um, I really enjoyed the, the first two talks today, and my talk is obviously not going to go into a lot of detail about training, though I love to talk training. Um, what did we actually change? Well, we knew we had to focus on aerobic development. Since all the kids trained about two and a half months a year, they never had a chance to, to uh, develop aerobically. Um, they, they were just doing the bare minimum during those two and a half months. And so we, we started preaching some different things to them. We, we preached consistent training over time, consistent days, weeks, months, years of training. Each day builds on the day before, each week builds on the week before, each month, etc. cetera. Um, as Drew's coach likes to say, keep the ball rolling. That's sort of our, our little mantra. Uh, we don't wanna do things that'll make us have to stop. Okay, stop training, injuries, whatever. So we were honest with the kids who didn't want to make that kind of commitment. Um, they were welcome to be on our team and just run one season a year, but we would tell them that it would be pretty unlikely that you're going to make varsity on our team if you're running one season a year. They would improve, but probably not at the same rate as their teammates, and that has definitely been the case. Um, we also talk uh, about a training bank and we talk about putting money in the training bank uh, every day that a kid makes a deposit in their training bank by doing whatever their workout is it, it adds up this is common sense really we we want to make as few withdrawals as possible but but when you do need to make a withdrawal like you're getting your wisdom teeth out or you have to go to grandma's funeral or whatever and you're not going to get your work in it's really not a big deal because they've made so many regular training deposits. Um, huge withdrawals with no deposits, like taking a season off, we're, we're gonna leave them broke. They understood that. They really got that analogy and, and everyone sort of said, yeah, I think that makes sense. We made a lot of mistakes at first as we tried to increase our kids' training. We had a huge injury group early the first season, uh, but that injury group had things to do so we gave them their own little workouts with the goal of getting them back to running as quickly as possible. We focused on strengthening their bodies through body weight circuits, band work for hips and glutes, uh, balance work, a lot of barefoot work. Um, our, our summer training uh, for everyone involved long dynamic warm-ups. I've got that in our, my, you've got some notes about that. And we, we snuck in a lot of conditioning with our beginners in our warm-ups. That's just how we got them moving for longer than 10 minutes, which would be about all they could have started with. Um, our practices were really long by previous standards. Two hours would have been a minimum practice when we started 
the first summer that we took over the program. Uh, by the time of our first meet in, in early September 2014, the same one that Drew ran 1857 as a freshman, um, our, our ninth and 10th grade boys won the team title led by Chase Dawson and Peter Morris, both of whom were on our NXN team this year. They went one, two in the ninth, 10th grade race, and they were both faster than Drew was as freshmen. Uh, they were both beginning runners three months prior to that race. And they were doing run, walk workouts when they started, run four minutes, walk a minute. Both boys um, have had good improvement over the years, just good steady improvement. And they really bought in starting that summer of, of ninth grade. All right, tied um, to a focus on aerobic development is our view of taking a long-term approach. This means not focusing just on the, f on the present season, but keeping in mind the future uh, that the runner has. Each year they do a little bit more than last year. Um, our, their mileage increases usually from five, five to 10 miles more um, a year, roughly. We really train by minutes, not miles, but that's about what it turns out to be. Um, and if we do it right, my goal is to get them to college, able to handle the college training, but with room to improve. Um, I think if this were a presentation on our training, you would say, wow, your training is really simple and kind of easy. Um, and it, it sort of is. It, we, we really don't work at hard, hard paces at all. Um, and that's gonna be the biggest adjustment, I think, for my athletes when they get to college, is just the uptick in pace of just about everything. Well, to focus on aerobic development with a long-term approach means that you have to build bodies that can actually do that. And I'm not gonna go into much detail about that, but we do a lot of the same stuff as, as um, Doug and Dan do. We do a lot of uh, body weight stuff. We do cir band circuits. I have bunches and bunches of circuits. Some are dependent on the venue where we're training that day. You know, if I've got good bleachers at one, we might do something there or um, just different places. I make up circuits that work with where we're, we're gonna be. We do the weight room, though this year we could, we had so many kids that I had all my first year runners not in the weight room. This is a first for us. We just couldn't get in there. And our freshmen stayed really healthy just with body weight type work. Um, but I, I do prefer to get in the weight room too and move heavy weights around. Um, we focus on several things to help reduce injury rates, not just strength training, but we work on posture. We work on a lot of balance type stuff, running technique, um, general body strength and mobility, uh, especially focused on hips, glutes, core, and feet and calves. 